and we have compiled some information. And we thought it was important for you to see the surveillance. Are you ready to take a look at that now? Sure. John, on this day of the investigation, our detectives were outside of Bella's place of employment. She was observed leaving, and after waiting outside for a brief period of time, was picked up by a gentleman driving a pickup truck. Our detectives followed them until they arrived at your home. They were observed going inside. Didn't spend much time in there. They did get your dogs. Everyone piled back into the truck. And they traveled to a park. After spending some time at the park, they load back into the truck where this gentleman drops them off at your home. Bella turns to go into the house. She does turn and give this gentleman a friendly hug. On this day of the investigation, our detective was outside your home on this evening. The same gentleman was observed arriving at your house. He's greeted at the door by Bella. As they walk to the truck, it does appear that they're holding hands. They leave and are followed to a restaurant. And at this particular time, Bella does lean in and give this gentleman a kiss on the side of the neck. John, I know this isn't what you'd have hoped for. Our detectives did learn that this gentleman that your wife's been seeing has a warrant out for his arrest. Now, we do have some fugitive recovery officers that are here with us this evening. Officers Hill and Lewis. You can go ahead. Hi. This is John. This is Officer Hill. Okay. Officer Lewis. Okay. But if they could, real quick, just pat you down. Sure. This is kind of something to take. Okay. Thanks. Let me get a hold of our detective. Because we do know that this evening, the same gentleman picked her up. Yeah, we just finished the client briefing. Or do you still have them? Okay. Okay. They stopped at an apartment. Okay. He picked her up this evening. They went to an apartment. I don't know whose apartment it was, but it, I don't know if they were visiting a friend. Both of them did go inside this apartment. There seems to be some other people that are there. I suggest that we just load up go in that direction. Our detective is, is in the parking lot, is on site right now. They'll check us in, okay? Let's go. All right, come with me. All right, we're on our way right now. Hang on, this could be the detective now. Yeah. Uh, we're a couple blocks away. The other van's gonna like kind of stay in the street. We're gonna get in front of the other truck and then into the driveway a little bit. Okay, we're ready. They're coming out of the house? We're pulling up right now. Let's go. There's someone in the street that's going to guide us in. All right. Yeah, I see you. I see you. All right. There they are. There they are, right there. Well, what the hell is all this? You'd rather be you'd, you'd rather be with a with, with a con than me, huh? What the hell's going on here? This is cool. Well, what am I doing? What is he doing? Maybe you shouldn't have been having sex with a criminal. Huh? How about that? You're a drunk. A drunk. Oh yeah. Well, because. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. These are officers. This is bull. Stop. Don't touch me. Let him go. You want to go with him? Coming up, the conclusion. This, okay. Stop! Don't touch me! Let him go! 
Do you want to go with him? Yes, I okay. do want to go right with now, him. I, just relax. What the, did you do that for? Well, this is what no, happens when you break the law. I didn't do it. He you, did it. You did it. This isn't something. You, my relationship. This gentleman, your friend, had a warrant out for his arrest. He jumped just bail. Just down. He I broke the law. He's stop. going to jail. Yeah, this is, you. I'm not the police. <laughs> You're the one who brought them here. Oh, they would have well, found him. They would have found him eventually. Here. You brought this all upon us. You brought all of this. I'm five months pregnant, and you decide to run off to rehab then. That's the yeah. best time to do it. Oh, yeah. This has been going on for six months. I don't even think it's yours. How about that? How do you feel about that? Because he's taking care of it. Yeah, it didn't work out That's all right. He's the one who's been taking care of me while you've been in rehab, while you run off. That's right. I'm going to get my straight. I won't be drinking anymore. You're I'll find someone better than you. That's right. Whatever. Guess... I'm the best you're ever going to get, and I'm leaving you. This is it. Oh, you're leaving and me. And what is this bull? I, I see how you really crap? feel. I see how you really feel about me. You put him in this situation. You brought him into what this. What about me? What do you... What that seems to be me? the question. Maybe you should have been thinking about this, huh? Before you had sex with this guy. Maybe you should have, you know, found out who he was. He loved me. He didn't love me. I loved you. You don't love me. You love drinking and getting drunk and doing your thing. That's why I'm in out. rehab. That's why I volunteered to go to rehab. Because I love weeks. alcohol so much. For two much. weeks. That's a pacifier. That was to pacify me. Well, oh. it's a little too late. Okay. All right. Well, fine. It's just Where too late. Where are they taking him? I mean, he's in the I'm jail. I'm with him. That's where criminals go. I'm Excuse me. Yeah, follow Excuse your boyfriend. Me. I'm going with Scribble. him. Scribble. Excuse me. I am going with this man right here. Sure, you and a baby okay and safe. Either way, I'm gonna, you know. Whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. I'm going to move on. Bigger and better things. You know, I'll find out if it is my child. If it is, I'll, you know, I'll help raise it. If not, then I'll move on by myself. If that's the way she wants to be, that's fine with me. You know, maybe this is closure for me. Maybe this will, you know, help me move on. If that's who she wants to be with. And if it makes her happy, then, you know, I wish the best for her. But next, Cheaters presents Luis Hernandez, a previous suspect owning up to the responsibility of breaking his girlfriend's heart. Luis confesses his deceitful behavior in hopes of making amends. Luis Hernandez, age 26. Luis details how his experience on Cheaters changed his outlook on infidelity. Well, when the vans pulled up, uh, I was I was surprised, but at the same time, I couldn't believe it. You know, I wasn't so sure of the whole situation, what was going on. When I saw the cameras pull up, then I, then I, I knew that she was, she, you know, she had called cheaters and, you know, just to catch me on some act, you know, that I don't think it was right. Who's this? My friend? Yeah, it's your friend? I swear to God, she's my friend. Yeah, she's your friend? Where did you meet? Where did y'all meet at? At my job, she can't go get rims. What? You're tripping. No, I'm not tripping. I saw the tape. I saw everything. What tape? When I saw Alicia, I thought she was overreacting on the whole situation. She had told me we weren't together. She didn't want to be with me. And um, when she goes and does this, you know, it makes me realize that she still cares. You know, she was just testing me, I guess, you know, about the whole situation. So when she goes and does it, you know, that, did that, I was surprised, you know, but at the same time, you know, just made me realize that, you know, she, we weren't over with, you know, she still wants to be, she just wanted to make sure. I saw every time that she comes over there and every time, every time you're all hugging on her and then y'all go out to dinner or, or to, to, to a club. Oh my God. Do you know who I am? Did he tell you about his baby and his, the baby's mom and, and yeah, what he say yes. about me? That we broke up three months and we're trying no, to work we, it out. Yeah, we're trying to work, yeah, with all the cards and the letters. What cards? All the letters that you've been writing me telling me you miss me and you want me back. I think that I did mislead her, maybe. Uh, you know, with those three months, I gave her some letters saying how I felt about her whole relationship. And maybe that misled her. But her telling me, I don't want to be with you, stuff like that, made me kind of realize that it's over. So I try to move on 
with my life and her doing her stuff, me doing my own. And, you know, um, this person, you know, we just met. And uh, yes, we did go out one time and yes, we did kiss, but it's not, I, in my eyes, it wasn't none of her business because really she was telling me she didn't want to be with me. You're such a good liar. You're a good liar. And you even believe yourself. That's sad. You need to go get help. That's why I don't want to do anything with you, kiss you, sleep you, because I don't want to get any diseases from you, Louis. The possibilities of me and Alicia getting back together, I think it all involves in her forgiving me for whatever I've done. And for me, you know, become a better person in that way. You know, make her realize that I don't, I don't that ain't me. I don't want to do that to her. I love her and I want to be with her and she's the mother of my kid. And it's just not right to me. I want to change for her and I, w I want to show her that that I'm the one for her, and she's the one for me. Although devastated by the result, back inside for some more free food. With the ongoing charade shrouded by lies, the suspect's questionable character is further muddled in this recorded phone call with Patrice. The group arrive back at the companion's home, where they disappear inside for the remainder of the evening. Having gathered sufficient evidence, Cheater's operatives close the investigation and return to headquarters. Coming up, the confrontation. With little doubt as to the suspect's deceptive nature, Cheaters brings in Patrice to unveil the evidence. While preparing for the worst, Patrice relies on her inner strength. Patrice, thank you for being here today. I know the last few weeks have been kind of challenging for you. Are you ready to take a look at what our detectives have found out? You can stay right there, sweetie. Okay. As our investigation started, we were outside of the restaurant where d works. There he is on the inside. Okay. And initially, we were able to capture him as he serviced a patron. But just before she walks away, there was what appeared to be a brief exchange. The same patron exits the restaurant and for a moment or two, it looks like she misplaced her car, and that's all that we had from that standpoint. On this day, Patrice, our detective again followed. He was followed till he arrived at a fast food restaurant, and before long is met by the same woman. Once they meet, now he's driving a different car at this time. It looks like my purse. And you recognize that yes, purse? Yes, that's my purse. He got for me for my birthday. He told me it got stolen out the car or something. I don't know. That's my purse. My Louis Vuitton. That's what it looks like. So he's re-gifting? Gotta be. Your birthday gift? Gotta be. That's my purse. After they finish lunch, they all get back in the car. They drive to the what we assume to be the residence of this young lady. And that's where he remained for quite some time. Mm. So he's cheating on me. He's really cheating on me. He gave that bitch my purse. I want my purse, and I want to see him. I need to see him wherever he's at. I, I need to get to wherever he is. All right. Why don't you just hang tight for a moment? Let's see if I can contact Detective Gomez and find out exactly what's happening right now. Okay. Gomez, tell me what's happening. He picked her up at her home? Okay. 
they stopped at another house. Okay. And they're at a hotel. All right, we're gonna load up and be on our way. Oh man. If anything happens, call me. Okay. Gomez, we just got off the exit. We're gonna make this U-turn. Come on back. We'll turn into the motel. Gomez is gonna be right there in his car. He's gonna lead us right where we need to be. As soon as we get there, we're gonna jump out and, and they're still in the back by the pool, right? Okay, good. Okay, there he is. Hang on, tell them, stay right here, stay right here. Here's the gate right there. Stop, stop. What you doing over here? Is this this mine too, right? Uh, this yours, baby. He got you this. Yeah. Oh, this mine, sweetheart. Let me show it to you right here. Oh, I it. Baby. Yeah, this is around me. Oh, I know. Face, you hear me? What's this? Oh, what's this? What's this? No, what's this, though? No, you don't have to touch him. What, okay. What's this? It's all right. Huh? What's this? What's this? What's this man? Did you up here chilling? Yeah, I thought yeah. you had to work at the other Williams Chicken though today. What's man, up? Man, say, man, got my face. What's up? What, what, what's up, though? Where you going? Coming up next, the conclusion. Four long is met by the same woman. That's my purse. And now they're at a hotel. I think you got some explaining to do. You can handle this. Say, think I'm a whole some pump? Man, tell you how I don't know. Man, I need to know what's going on. You out here chilling with one of your little bros? This right here ain't even cool, man. Say, cool, man. Got my way, man. Well, I don't think it was very cool that you were lying to the woman that you have a child with. You don't got this mother my purse, and he out here the mother fool at the day's end. Well, you don't even know what's going on, my Oh, well, why don't you tell me? That's here. I mean, Call me an investigative you reporter. You don't got this mother purse, though. Hey, you don't come holler at me. Come holler at me. Man, now, I want to know what's going on right now, though. Right this needs to, you need to tell me what's going on right now. Why y'all up here kool ain't chilling in the mother I mean, damn, my mother She's in this bitch. You see, say P Patrice Johnson, baby. Shut the up. Get the bitch. Why didn't tell me what's going on? You and this, you and her. Damn me. How doing? Okay, it's cool. It's real mother cool. Okay, it don't matter though. You ain't gonna get him up. My Louis, my Louis Vuitton. Okay, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. But you don't gave up my. She out her Kool-Aid like it's all grave at the day's end. You couldn't have took, you ain't take her to the suite or none. She must not be worth none. She ain't take you to no mother suite. You up here at the day's end. What's that going on between you and this gentleman? Because obviously nothing, you didn't. Nothing like that. I didn't know nothing about all this. Okay, well, it's, if you didn't know, no one's saying it's your fault. No, I know it's okay. not my fault. Because he didn't tell me he'd give me the purse. Okay, I okay. Purse. I'm not worried about the purse right now. You don't got nothing in her? That. Tell me what's going on. You don't hear me? You don't hear me? You can't tell me what's going on? I mean, tell me what's going on, though. You got to put your hands on me. I'm cheating right here, man. You got some up in there. You got to do it. got something up in there. You need to get out that mother. You don't hear proud out here. Hey. Man, this is going to be one of my poses. Oh, my God. I can't believe cheaters. You need to get in your mother car and leave this mother up here. Give me the key. Where the keys at? You gonna leave this bitch up at the day's in? Where your car at? The I leave you story? and her up at the day's in. Is there a side to this story that you want to let us know? Yeah, no, I ain't no side of the damn story, man. Me, you have to be in my business, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Camera, it rang up. Damn. Damn, baby girl, I ain't late. Damn, this. Yeah, she's a good girl. Oh, she look like one, though. You know what? Y'all know what's going on, though. Y'all know what's going on. But if you were unhappy, do you think she'd be staying in it? 
No, I'm asking. If you were unhappy, why didn't you just come you got, well, how? Baby, you need to talk right. to him, because I know well, there's nothing about you. What? And you can't f with me, so no, you can't f me. You heard I'm a gay ass bitch, you can't f with me. You can't f with me. I'm an innocent bass fool, you baby. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know nothing about you, Okay, well, you done. Okay, you should have told me. You done to tell me. You done about you. Say your mother ass on that side. How about that? God, wait, how? Damn me. You stuck up at this bitch, so try to get your way to the crib, baby. Try to get your way to the crib, baby. You get on this bitch, what you talking about, you ass? You get on this bitch, that's who I would get on. That's that. You don't talk about. You don't talk about this, man. You don't talk about this, man. Yeah. Can we still can kick it again, Kyle? It's on. It's on. Hey. Patrice, be careful. I will. Thank y'all. If you need anything, if you need anything, let us know. I started to be up. I was about to beat her up. He told me not to. He said, don't do that. I'm about to hit her. It's talking. Right here. Watch out. Watch out, guys. After the confrontation, Patrice comes to terms with the humiliation she's endured. Later in the show, Cheaters reports on how Patrice decides to proceed. But now, Cheaters welcomes back Stephanie Wilson, a previous suspect hoping to convince the public that her exploits were justified. Ready to plead her case, Stephanie collects her thoughts before coming forward. Stephanie Wilson, age 23. Stephanie faces the music while offering questionable explanations for her unfortunate behavior. The crew surprised the hell out of me. They came up out of nowhere. I was having a party. I was trying to, you know, be out with my girlfriends and everything. And then they come and just wreck my entire night with all these cameras, all these people I don't know. Just putting my business out for everybody to see all over the place. And it's just completely embarrassing. What are y'all doing? Uh just what the f is going on? You? you tell well, me. Well, we kind of know what's been going on. What the f is going on? And Chase? What is going on with you and Chase? I want some answers. Wait, they're Chase. just friends. No, okay. they're not just friends. No. Yes. She's my yes. best friend. No. I've known her. No. Well, you don't know as much as you boyfriend. think you do. What? Do you want to see the tape? No. Give me the tape. I felt bad for what I did to Jill, but in the end, you know, sometimes you just have to put your feelings first and you put yourself first, and if that means losing friendships along the way, as long as I'm happy in the end, it doesn't really matter that me and her aren't friends anymore. Bitch! Okay, guys. No, watch out. You're my best friend. Bitch! After the confrontation, me and Chase just basically went into our own little secluded world and didn't talk to anybody, got away from everything, went to you know, a nice hotel and just kind of talk things out and figured out what we were going to do for the two of us and didn't worry about everybody else's influence on us. Just leave her alone! Yeah. Yeah. You know, just give it a so what's up? You want my man now? Your man's not good enough for you? I'm done with all of this. Well, I'm done with... You're you telling her. Don't do anything! You no, there are cameras in What the f*** is wrong with if I could say anything to Joe right now, it'd be that I'm sorry for hurting him and sorry for taking away his friendships and taking away the life that he had planned because that wasn't my intention. But like I said, I was living in the moment and wasn't thinking about our future and wasn't thinking about how everything I was doing was going to affect everybody. And I know he's probably not going to forgive me. Cheaters. Please meet Sarah Reedy a young woman with concerns about the lack of her boyfriend's availability. At her wit's end, Sarah turns to cheaters to ease her troubled heart. An Ennis, age 24, a bank teller suspected of using her spare time to field offers from eligible suitors. Investigation day five. With Eric away for the evening at his weekly card game, cheaters intelligence set up outside 
the apartment Eric shares with his girlfriend. All remains quiet for some time until a stocky, unknown gentleman arrives on the scene. The unknown man comes to the door where suspect Shannon Ennis greets her companion and walks him to the parking lot. Several miles ahead, suspect Ennis and company stop by a malt shop to satisfy their craving for something sweet. After settling in, the enamored pair cap off their conversation with a light kiss. With this current revelation, Cheater's PIs surmise that any notion of innocence has disappeared. Upon arrival at the apartment complex, suspect Ennis's companion gallantly walks his lady to her front door. Knowing that Eric's game night often runs late, suspect Ennis invites her companion inside. After peering around, the nervous fellow jets inside, throwing caution to the wind. Investigation Day 12. With Eric away at a scheduled support group meeting, Cheater's agents catch up with suspect Ennis in her companion's vehicle. Before reaching their intended destination, the two stop by a liquor store to stock up on a 12-pack of beer. A short while later, Cheater's field operatives track suspect Ennis and her companion to a local watering hole. First priority, a game of foosball. Suspect Ennis's companion, now identified as Richard Claude, escalates his competitive nature by showing no mercy in his effort to shut out his date. With little doubt regarding companion Claude's dominance, suspect Ennis quickly morphs into a submissive little pussycat, purring at his beck and call. Before leaving the bar, companion Claude gets exactly what he wants, and then some. With an arm around his babe, companion Claude and Ms. Ennis head back to the car. A short drive later, they arrive at suspect Ennis's pad. Companion Claude grabs the alcohol and makes his way into the apartment, where he intends to pick up where he left off at the bar. Investigation Day 19. Exactly one week later, Cheater's operatives once again anticipate trouble on the night Eric attends his weekly support group meeting. Back at the couple's apartment, station field agents find suspect Ennis and companion Claude ready to go out and paint the town red. After a brief pursuit, Cheater's PIs trail the lovers to a popular golf and game center. Once again, companion Claude starts off by challenging his opponent to a video game car race. Next, suspect Ennis opts for the less challenging game of skee ball, where companion Claude admires her prowess. And speaking of games, suspect Ennis demonstrates her ability to bluff in this recorded phone call with her boyfriend, Eric. All bets are off as Cheater's Intelligence closes the case and prepares to put an end to this game. Coming up, the confrontation. Verifying Shannon's secret tendency, Cheater supplies Eric with the tale of the tape. Remaining optimistic, Eric hopes that his girlfriend has not led him astray. Eric, I know that the special arrangements have been made for you to be here with us this evening, and I wanted you to know that we do appreciate your time and attention. The reason that we did have you come out this evening, our detectives do have some information, and they thought this might give you some of the answers that you've been looking for. Are you ready to take a look at some of that? Yeah. On this particular evening, when you were playing poker, we had a detective outside of your home. A gentleman showed up, picked up Shannon, they got in the car, and were followed to a, a restaurant. And you can see as they walk into the restaurant, they're holding hands. As they dine, he leans in and gives her a kiss. After dining, he brings her home, but before leaving, he goes inside. On this day in the investigation, the 
some gentleman caller shows up. They stop at our liquor store and make a purchase. And after they've taken care of all their pit stops, he brings her back to your home. I'm like an idiot because I trusted her not to do that, not to be doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I know this is this is not easy. On this evening, the same gentleman shows up, picks up Shannon. They drive to an arcade. They're having a date playing Daytona USA. After completing their activities at the fun park, they go to another bar and you can just see their behavior inside. Eric, I know this isn't pleasant. I know it's not what you wanted to find out. But the detectives informed me that this gentleman showed up again and picked Shannon up. Would you like an opportunity to confront Shannon face to face? Yeah. Okay. Let me call the detective right now. And I'll just find out. Give me an update on their location. Yeah, we just finished the briefing. What are you looking at? They just had something to eat there at a bar, a restaurant bar. It's pretty close from where we are right now. Okay. Okay. That, we'll stage right there. I just wait for you. I'll call you when we get there. Okay. We're on our way. What we're going to do is just load up. We have detectives that are on the scene. They'll update us if there's any movement. Okay. Are you ready to go? All right. This way. Here's a detective now. Yeah. Okay. What do you have? Yeah, we're rolling around. We're on our way. Okay, what is she wearing? What's he wearing? Okay, tell me what we're looking for. White top and blue jeans. Hang on, we're turning right now. Okay, I see you. Right there in front of us. Okay. Okay. You got just follow me. Stay with me. She's wearing a white uh, shirt on the right side of the bar. Okay. Watch out. Where's she going? Come on, Eric. Shannon, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you explain why you're out with this gentleman? What are you doing? This is like. Coming up, the conclusion. In public, and do this. Even do it, I'm gonna take this. Come on. Brain. Listen to me. Let go. Do you have anything to say about this? It's a messed up deal. If you had something better to do, you wouldn't be following my ass. Who you know, are you to get in the middle of my business? Well, Shannon, get away unfortunately, from me. unfortunately, get out of my face. You're get unable, out of my you're face. You're unable to tell your boyfriend of two years the truth. Where's Eric? Eric, Eric. Eric. Please don't do this. No, Eric, just listen to me for a minute. For a get minute. Off of me. For a minute. Get People please. around me, Eric. Don't push hard at all. No, guys. Oh, no, guys, stop. Yo. No, no, no. No, guys! Stop, 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 stop. Cool, it's cool, it's cool. Stop, stop. Oh, my God. Oh, hey, hey. I got cars in this parking lot. Y'all gonna have to get the out of here. Still, we got a business to run right here. We gotta go. Cameras gotta get out of my parking lot. Get out of my face! Come on, the camera's out of the parking lot. Did any of that make sense? I mean, no, not really, because now she's you know, sitting there begging me to stop talking to her. Get away from me. Oh my God. What was left for her to say to you? Nothing, nothing, nothing. What was left? That's why I walked away.
So her or whatever, every girl that I'd ever date, I never really cared about them or whatever and treated I never didn't do anything mean to them or abuse them or nothing like that, but I never treated them like worth really. Would you be able to put in words what this experience has done for you? Like I believe in karma and stuff like that and that's, you know, you do things right or whatever, the good things are supposed to happen to you if you're doing good things for people or whatever. And it, it backfired on me tonight for damn for sure. After the confrontation, Eric swallows his pride and casts cases in Cheater's history. Rafael Gutierrez, age 46. Rafael visits with Cheaters to reveal how his life has changed since the confrontation that exposed his ex-wife and put Cheaters on trial. I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, I didn't know what she was gonna say or do. Um, you know, obviously she still denied it and she never wanted to see the, the videos or the proof that we had that she had been doing what she had been doing, you know. I guess it was kind of embarrassing for her knowing that now I knew the truth. You know, when you know the truth, it sets you free. You can't deny it. I don't know who's here. Yes? We know you what you've been doing. Let's give her some money. Let's back up a little bit. Will you speak to me for a second? Yeah. No, after the confrontation, um, she stayed with a, uh, a friend and uh, she came by the house. Of course, I didn't open the door and uh, she came by the house. Uh, I wasn't sure what she wanted, but I did talk to her a couple times on the phone. I was happy in some way that it was going to be over after she, uh, after we had confronted her, and uh, it was a feeling that I knew I was going to get to start all over again, and I knew the truth, and I was free from the lies and the deceits, you know, that she had make me go through Hello. all right guys you know what leave her alone i want to leave you want to leave yes okay all right he wants okay. to go i think we've done as much as we're going to be able to do here but we proved what we've needed to well i've started all over again you know and uh i got a new girlfriend and i got a uh i started my job my my business back again and I've been able to spend time with my kids and, uh, you know, I lost a lot of time away from them throughout this whole uh, incident and um, working out and just having fun and, and just doing the things that I like to do with my family and friends. The world may recall that four innocent members of Cheater's crew were indicted on various assault and hindering charges arising out of this Gutierrez case by the Tarrant County District Attorney's Office. The charges were vigorously defended, and there was never so sweet a sound as the court's pronouncement 12 times not guilty, as so declared by a jury of Cheater's peers. Not only were Joey Greco, Hunter Carter, Walter Woods and Thomas Gibbons found not guilty of all charges in this matter, but also the four men have had their records expunged. Their records and that of cheaters remain clean as a whistle. We heard some noises outside and I didn't know what to think. I mean, I was in my underwear and John got up and got a baseball bat and I mean, he thought there was like somebody out there like some thugs or something and and then all of a sudden like a camera crew comes running in, you know, and that crazy girl, you know, comes in and she's just like, I can't believe you did this and blah, blah, blah and stuff and I mean, it just, it really freaked me out. I didn't know what to believe. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. What the what are you doing? Hey, watch out. I told you what would ever happen if hey, you hurt me. Hey, oh. hey. He, he gave me a reason to believe that there was a future. Um, 
he really, really wanted to get rid of her. I mean, he was just a thorn in his side. She was always yelling at him. And I mean, he told me basically that, that he wanted to be with me, that, that he just had so much fun with me. And I mean, we had fun together. And it's like he lied to me. How long has this been going on between you and I don't and know, like two months. Two months? That's all right. Look. <laughs> Why did you lie to me? I'm I'd be saying the same thing. Do. You asked. You got this. Somebody get her right home. Here you go. I'm so tired of being when, when Sabrina came in, I could tell that John felt really, really bad. And that's when I realized he was lying to me. Honestly, I would have thought he would have, you know, just, you know, said, you know, what are you doing? Get out, you know, or something. But instead, he, he didn't run after me. He ran after her. And that just made me feel so low. You know what? Both of y'all are so up. You don't even know it. You lied to me, and you're stupid for listening to him. Get her out of here. Both of you guys. Y'all are stupid as I don't know. No, and don't spit in my face again. Don't spit in my face don't again. Don't worry. I wouldn't you're really a, see you. You're liar and you're an idiot you just keep pushing it that way you'll serve my purpose after the experience with john i really really want to find someone that really cares about me and loves me and it's not all about sex not all about the friends with benefits or uh you know just kind of having fun i mean it's fine to have fun with with men no, but I think it's it's better to, to get to know somebody really, really well before you go and you have sex. Since the evening of the confrontation, Tamara Marcus has since moved out of the residence she once shared with Mr. Duffy and is only concerned with the well-being of her unborn child. Greetings, I'm Joey Greco. Thanks for watching another presentation of Cheaters. Please meet Alma Garcia, a gentlewoman questioning her husband's loyalty to their rocky marriage. Requesting a third party intervention, Alma calls on cheaters to protect her aching heart. Alma Garcia, age 36. A bingo caller concerned her husband plays the odds with another woman. Well, when they would pro, uh, ask me if I can be married with him, at the first, I didn't want to get married because we was having a lot of problems. Uh, I found out that he was talking to another girl. But when he asked me if I can get married with him, I was thinking in my heart, well, if he asked me this important question, maybe he's going to change. The things that worry me is he said on the phone, he turned it off, he put on silence. And when I'm working, my example on Fridays, I get off real late, sometimes two, two o'clock in the morning, two, two, 2.30, and he never called me. And when I got home, he just got there. I noticed because the car is still hot, I can still, I can hear the, the car noises. I do a lot of things for him. He don't appreciate it. And that made me feel bad. Because I spend all the time just for him. Sometimes I put away my kids just for him. I put myself away just for him. He hurt my feelings that he doesn't appreciate what I'm doing for him. I don't know what else I'm going to do because he become part of my life. And I don't know what I'm going to do without him. If I find out if he's doing something wrong, I don't know what I'm going to do. Our relationship away, throw our life away. After two years, we're supposed to have kids together. After two years, you're going to around? Who the f is that, Rachel? Get the camera on my face. When me and Rachel sat down and talked about the other person that was part of this confrontation, she had mentioned that she had started falling in love with this other woman, and they'd been dating for a while. Um, 
The other female didn't know exactly what was going on with her and me. She didn't even, she was unsure of our relationship. Well, you're only getting one side of the story. Now I know. Now I know what was going on. Now I know how she was feeling. Now I know what had happened. I, I don't think there's anything that could have changed it. Um, we just weren't meant to be together. She, uh, she needed something more, and I guess I just didn't have enough to give to her or the affection or the attention that she needed. And... That's okay, though, because now I have somebody else. Say, baby, I love you. I need to spend more time with you. Let's go on a vacation. Now go, oh, let's go find a slut bathroom of all places. In bathroom. Jody. What kind of is that? I loved you. I gave you my life. Please don't say it's it. I can't do this anymore. Well, I'm with this new person. Her name's Joe. Um, we bought a house down in Hawaii, and we'll be moving there within the month. Um, we're, matter of fact, in the final stages of adopting our little boy, who is wonderful and adorable. He's um, actually from Cambodia. Um, within six months, we are getting married. We're going to have a huge wedding. Both of our families are coming down, and I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for cheaters. I thank Cheaters for everything, for helping find out the truth and be able to move on with my life and have my happily ever after. Left with no other choice, Alma Garcia now seeks to divorce the man. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to another episode of Cheaters. Please meet Lamont Brood. A sincere young gentleman puzzled by his girlfriend's constant change in attitude. Hoping to end the vicious cycle, Lamont asks Cheater. I'll for you. Yeah, sure. On this evening, our detective followed as she left her home. She was followed to a club. She gets up. There's a gentleman sitting right at the pavilion. As she approaches, the gentleman gets up, and obviously this is the person that she intended on meeting that evening. <laughs> oh, for real? They embrace one another, sit down to have a short conversation before getting in her car and driving off. Our detective followed them until they arrived at a club, spent some time there, and as they went back to his car, I don't know, that's not something that you really want to look at on this day left her home she was followed to the same location generally she stops at a corner that this same gentleman was waiting for her as they've done in the past they go to another bar we observe the two of them entering go to another bar and as they left the bar that evening you can see oh, that they kiss and now they spend quite some time mm. and i know that's not what anyone would expect from no, someone that they even what a relationship I with where did <laughs> say that she was going to be this evening i think she said she was going over her ain't house because she was sick you know what i'm saying so I was like, all right, I just hot at you later, you know what I'm saying? I had to work anyway, so. Our detective has confirmed that is again in the company of this young gentleman. That's so real. Would you like to confront face to face? For sure. And ask yourself. For sure. Now, let me check with the detective and see where they are right now. Yeah, what do you got? Okay, they're at the bar now. We just wrapped up. We're going to head over there right now. Okay, bye. Okay. 
Come this way. Yeah. We're almost to your location. They're sitting next to a fire. Their back is to the stairwell, so we'll be able to move in a little bit closer probably before they see us. All right. Here you are. Pull up. All right. Right here. Okay. You stay with me. Okay. Come here. Come here. First landing. David, get in front of them. Okay. They're upstairs. There's a fireplace up there. We're going to look for the fire. They're sitting with their backs to the stairwell. They're, they're right there. What's going on, Pimp? Say, Pimp. Say, Pimp, don't put your hand on me. You know what I'm talking about? Don't put your hand on me, though. You ain't got nothing to do with this, huh? You ain't got nothing to do with this. I'm talking to her, bro. I'm talking, bro. Hey, what are you doing, huh? Say, like I said, bro. Jesse, Jesse. Calm come down. on, you know what I'm talking about? Calm down. You know what I'm talking about? Calm you need to talk down. to you. Calm I need to talk to you, pimp. You, you know what I'm saying? Say, you ain't got nothing say, to say, pimp. You, there, you ain't got nothing to say. Say, excuse me, bro. Say, you need to watch out what you're doing, though, ho ass. Say, like I say, you need to watch out. Say, like I say, I need to talk to her. You need to get on off of me, bro. Say, I need to holler at you, though. Talk to you. I mean, what's wrong with you? What, you, what, you, what, you, what you mean? Say, it, bro. Say, like I said, you need to keep your hands off me, though. Like I said, I need to talk to you, though, huh? Let me holler at you. What's it all for? What you calling for? What's all this, huh? Don't worry about it. What's all this, huh? Your ass ain't not a fair. I just lost my job. You are never. That's what I'm saying. I'm not supporting you staying in my house. You ain't. You spent. My house. Look, hey, can you at least yeah. explain to Lamont you why you couldn't tell him the truth? You know yes, ass. you do. You need to spray yeah. something to me. Hey, you need to spray, spray yeah. something to me. I'm you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yes, you do. No, I, I don't. What you mean you ain't got nothing to do? Say, bro. Say, like I say, bro, you ain't. Say, bro, I told you you better keep your hands off me, young cat. I'm saying. I just lost my job. You never there for me. Yeah, I ain't there for you, but you still stand in my house. It, me. How am I I'm tired, of, to you. I'm tired of your ass. You tired of me? Yes. Girl, what you mean? How you tired of me? Huh? Coming up next, the conclusion. I'm how am I listening to you? I'm tired of your ass. You tired of me? Yes. Girl, what you mean? How you tired of me? Huh? How you tired of me? Huh? No more. What you mean? What? What you taking, huh? Oh, hey, hey, man, I ain't through talking to you. I'm done talking to you. No, you like I said, I ain't through. Don't talk to me. Come on, get some. Come get some. You too light, baby. You a hoe, man. You too light. You gonna get this. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, break it up. 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 Come on. Get your song. You lightweight. Pull. Yeah. Hey, ready? You all right? Yeah, I'm straight. All right, look. Hey, I need you to calm down, okay? Say, man. Y'all get that out of my face, man. She didn't want to talk. There's not too much you can do. Y'all stand right there then. We can, you can calm down because there's only so much that you can do. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, it's cool, Pimp. It's cool. It's cool. I ain't worried about it. Let him go. She, she deserves a little class. That's why she got no car. She driving that car. I'm straight, yes, so. All right, let's go. Come on, let's put you in here. Man. Did she have any explanation for you? She didn't say nothing. Just what I'm doing there and still ain't getting no answers. But, you know, I, I don't need no answers, right? I mean, you know, those eight, nine months, you know, 
Yes, they was just, you know, with nothing. <laughs> it's out of my life, you know what I'm saying? So, therefore, I don't have to deal with it no more. Or make it out, you know. Who knows where that would have led to. Um, and then when the trucks pulled up, I did, at first I didn't think much of it. I thought uh, it might be a delivery van or something. I mean, those couple of restaurants, businesses. Um, um, and then the doors flew open, and I see Tony, I see cameras, and I freaked. I took off. I, you know, I didn't want to be right there right then. What the hell are you doing? Cheaters remains on standby when she charts a course for her future. But now, Cheaters welcomes back Jennifer Royal, a former companion who casts a new spin on an old case. Willing to come forward, Jennifer speaks candidly about her actions on the day she was confronted on Cheaters. Jennifer Royal, age 24. Jennifer explains her part and defends her actions during one of the most spellbinding busts in Cheaters' storied history. I was so scared and so shocked, and I was just praying that it would not be something to do with Kelsey, even though I kind of had a feeling, because the way Jeff described her was that she was crazy and she was violent, so I just got this feeling in my stomach, just like a hundred bricks, just this sinking feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm in so much trouble. What are you doing here? Nothing. You think you are? What are you doing? What made me walk away from him was he was just spending too much time, you know, talking to her and I'm just standing over there and he's not doing anything. And I think that we could have easily just walked away from the situation, just walked the other way, just get in my car and left. Go! Go, go! Go, go! Come on. Come on, come on, Chan. Don't go anywhere. That night, he had actually hurt his foot pretty badly, and I started to feel kind of guilty that I had accidentally run his foot over. And um, so he was laid up in his house, so I decided that maybe I should go visit him. And he was in the bathroom and he was crying, but he couldn't tell me why. She just ran over his foot. So let's get someone who can take him to the emergency room. Oh, I feel so bad for you. So bad. No, that's, that's, we don't need, we need that. I told him that he should get help and he confessed to me that, you know, he was actually bipolar and all this stuff that I didn't know about him. I just started finding out all this stuff that, I mean, you know, he has this drinking problem that I didn't know about. And he has, you know, bipolar disorder. And so all of a sudden it's like everything that he was saying that Kelsey was, it was actually him. And I actually started to feel really, really, really bad that, you know, he had ever done that to Kelsey. She just wants to make sure you're okay. All right. Okay. All right. I just jumped into this whole thing without really even knowing this guy. And I was planning a family with somebody that I barely knew. I had never lived with him. And I really hadn't even spent that much time with him. And here I am, you know, thinking that I'm pregnant by him. I guess the whole thing that I've learned from this experience is that I need to slow down and just kind of, you know, take it easy and make sure that I completely know somebody and know their past and all that kind of stuff before I decide that I want to spend my life with them. Maybe even before I just seriously date them because right now I'm not even really looking to seriously date anybody. In fact, I'm, I'm kind of scared at like what would happen. Kennett, age 30, a lovesick man distraught over his estranged girlfriend's desire to increase the distance between them. Even though we're separated, we're not seeing other people. At least I'm not. She says she isn't, 
and I want to believe her, but there are signs and I'm no idiot. I just look this way. I see her when I can and I try to see her a lot, but she comes up with excuses sometimes and um, some of them not so good. But now that we have the distance between us, the s space in miles, what am I gonna do? Just run up to the house every time I think something's wrong? I just have to know the truth. I love this girl with all my heart more than I've ever loved anyone before. And I tell you, I've had plenty of time to go through each and every one of them and compare them. And they don't hold a candle to her. But I have questions and these questions need to be answered so I can sleep at night. I refuse to do this to myself. And if it's the last thing I do, I will get to the truth. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Rachel Smith, age 28. A young woman accused of using her separation to facilitate a new relationship. Investigation Day 5. Cheaters detectives set up a perimeter around the house Shannon shares with the suspect. In the early evening hours, Cheaters investigators spy an unidentified male leaving the quiet residence. Cheaters gumshoes spot the suspect holding up the rear. Detectives denote the couple's distinct size difference. Field operatives tail the man and the suspect, Rachel Smith, to an upscale shopping center. Suspect Smith and her very tall companion make their way to a local fishmonger. Inside, the two do not eat fish, but they drink like fish. After knocking back a few, the two hit the Heel Toe Express to a nearby bath and body boutique. Dainty bag in hand, the giant and his Thumbelina make a fragrant getaway in his truck. Following a brief interlude behind closed doors at the suspect's house, the unidentified male departs. Investigation Day 8. Cheaters P.I. spot the previous day's truck pull up to Suspect Smith's home. The third party, now identified as Thomas Bell, saunters up to Suspect Smith's store. A short time later, Bell emerges with a suspect in tow. Cheaters detectives follow the couple to a local tavern. Upon arriving at the tap house, Cheater surveillance catches the pretty pair tanking a few tall ones and kissing in the pub. Suspect Rachel Smith demonstrates her talent for tall tales in this evasive earful recorded by Shannon. Hey, what's up? Just looking to get out and do something with you. What do you say? Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm hanging out with some friends. Oh, uh, yeah, um, i like to get together with you and maybe talk later this evening. I, I don't know. I mean, like, because I'm, I'm spending the night over at Tracy's. So it's going to be like on all my things. We'll try to hook that up. I just, uh, I'm just, you know. Busy. Yeah, yeah. Then um, I'll catch you later. I hope so. Bye. Bye. Suspect Smith and companion Bell stumble back to his pickup. As the gentle giant opens the door for Suspect Smith, she must experience shortness of breath because Bell decides to give her mouth to mouth resuscitation. As Suspect Smith's vital signs return, Cheaters detectives call the day done. Investigation Day 11. Cheaters agents spy Suspect Smith and Companion Bell leaving the home that Shannon continues to fund. The suspect and her companion disappear inside a convenience store to gather supplies. Next, the couple are tailed to a restaurant that serves fast Mexican food. After conquering their Aztec platters, the pair leave. At home, the twosome trigger motion-sensitive cameras placed in the house by Shannon. The cameras capture the couple's caper on the couch. In the afterglow, the pair part ways, and companion Bell heads out alone, a noticeable spring in his giant steps. With a final piece of evidence to bring Suspect Smith to justice, Cheaters B.I.s head to headquarters to compile their findings. Coming up, the confrontation.
satisfied that they've gotten to the bottom of the case. Cheaters call Shannon to schedule a debriefing on the findings of the investigation. And just to hear the truth, Shannon agrees to the meeting. Shannon, thanks for being here this evening. I know the last few months have been very challenging for you. Shannon, I know you've been waiting, and I'm not going to take any more time because I, I can see what do you know? your face, how concerned you are. So are you ready to take a look at what we've been able to find? Yeah, I guess so. On this day, we had a team that was outside of your place. We did observe Rachel as she left in the company of another young gentleman. They get into his truck, drive to a shopping area. And who is that clown? Well, at this point, nothing seems too out of the ordinary. They do stop into a restaurant bar. Our detective did go inside and was able to observe them as they took a seat up at the counter, had a drink and possibly a bite to eat before they got back into his vehicle and returned back to your apartment. Because with this information, we did have you place the hidden camera inside your apartment. Yeah. On this evening, the same gentleman picks up Rachel. They go directly to a convenience store, make a few purchases, and they return back to the, the apartment that you lease. There's movement to another room, and oh, you can man. see. That's the way she wants it, man. And that's what it's come to. After all I put into this, she can have it like that, bro. I'm through with her. But, uh, I know that you're upset, Shannon. I'm and upset, I man. This is my world that you're talking about. I did all this for her, and it turned out the way she wanted it. And, and man. Our detectives have informed me that earlier this evening, the same gentleman picked Rachel up. Would you like an opportunity to ask Rachel face to face? Oh, yeah. You give me one moment, I'm going to contact our detective, and I'll find out exactly where they are, and then we'll be out of here in a second, OK? We just finished up the briefing. You still with them? OK. They went to a bar, had something to eat. They're still there now. They've well, been there about 45 we're minutes. We're OK. Home. Shannon, I know you're anxious, but we have to do this through, we have to go through the procedure. We're on our way in two seconds. Okay, there he is right there. Go on right here. Calmly. Calmly. Where's, stay with me. Stay with me. There. Okay, right here, guys. Right there. Gotcha. Rachel? What's really I'm Joey going on? And you know Shannon. What's this? What's up, player? What? what? This is you. This is what you wanted right here. You're on candy camera. Now what's up? That's his apartment. No, no, you've been stay going sitting to. down, homeboy. This is an invasion of privacy. Is what this is. Okay, well, actually, you're in a public area. It's just All right. Immature. Like, how? What the? Man. What you wearing? That's, that's another you don't wear that for me. That's an issue for another day. How does she oh, explain hey, it? Hey, where's the waiter? Oh, we need the what? jack here. How does she explain it, bro? What did she tell you? That it was over? Look, yeah, it's been over. Like no, really yeah, that's what she's it's telling okay. you. No. We need the check. I mean, I put a lot of time into my relationship. Four years, I know. Yeah, I know, but it's not just that, brother. The fact remains that she was going to get what she wanted. We've and talked. You're she wants there. totally different things than what you want. Well, hey, then have you, you should, sat down and you listened to tell her? me that. Have you sat down and listened to her? Man, I do what I can, but I got to give her no. a space so she can think, huh? And you know what, what I've seen wants? so far from here? I've seen you talking and you not listening to her. Do you hear me now? Coming up, the conclusion. That's the way she wants it, man. What's really going on? 
we on? You're on Candy Camera. Now what's up? Would you like a Verizon commercial? Say, it's whatever you want it to be, brother. Beat your feet like a bicycle clown. No, this is over. You are asked out like a plumber. Hey. Apologize for this. If I don't say it, then you just... Let's get out of here. No, don't go anywhere, man. No, hey, hey. Say, look out, man. No. Don't you see two grown folks talking here? Keep this civil. Keep this civil. Keep it civil. Come on, let's get out of here. Say, hey, I deserve some answers, some explanations. Can you get out of the way? For all the time. I'm sorry, man. Come here. Come here. No, I'm sorry. I got it. No, I'm sorry. Don't we talk about this in private? Right there. Don't protect her now, man. No, no. This is beyond you now. Let her taste it. This is beyond you now, man. No. If I've dealt with this, I can deal with anything. And you. Expect a restraining order. Oh, man. Whatever clever, man. Don't run. Damn, face your fears, man. We can talk about this when we get home. Man, I hope you don't sleep for six months. Trifling ass, bitch. Get these out of the way. Get out, big guy. Where are you leaving to, man? Come on, man. Somebody fight me. Damn. Now will probably meant for each other. We just Hell. talk about this like ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a little bit of money for you. You gonna try to claim that too? Huh? No. You gonna try to claim that too? This is private property, dude. Yeah, man. Ain't nothing private Back no more, off. brother. My whole Back life's off. been exploited on television. No, because of you. No, because of her, man. Because you just you. got in in the mix. You and you know what? I really don't blame you in the beginning, but now you're making it seem like hell. You, know, you down you for believing. This venue. We could have been civil about this. Say, I didn't expect to find anything until these people were gracious enough to bless me with uh -huh. this information. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah, man, I seen the footage, brother. Yeah. I put the camera in the apartment, dude. Watchdogs. Back up. Yeah. No. no you, you, know, man, you got that, dude. That's what it is. Go on. Burn off, man. Use a hoe. Hey, huh. you don't have to to Calm him. down. You don't have to it's talk to him right. if you don't want to. No. You're you badgering just let her. us have her. You're badgering her. We're okay. Okay. We're not having an altercation out here. Okay. All right. You need to back up. Yeah, okay. Get out of the way. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Okay. So I just had enough anyway. Say, don't bang some other dude's old lady if you don't want to box, hoe ass mother. Y'all get this on film. All of you. Show it kids shut it down and do you, you know if you don't give your heart to somebody when they feel it's time then you're wrong and if you give it all out there too soon well then you're just a sucker and when they snatch it from you well you know you put it out there for it to be taken you know uh, you don't advertise something if you don't want people to know about it. And I advertised how much I loved her. It was all going a little too fast for me. I kind of needed to just slow it down a little bit and just ponder things a little. And that's all I was trying to do, man, was just give her a chance to think if that's what she really wanted and if it's what I really wanted. The companion returns to discuss what happened the night of the confrontation. Identity withheld, age 25. The companion reflects on the unpleasantness that resulted from the confrontation on cheaters. I can't believe y'all are serious with that, you know. Like, that's something serious. You could, like, run up on somebody like that. So, you know, he almost got popped. <laughs> Seriously. Nah, it's okay. can't be running up on people. It really wasn't worth it in the end, but... After we split and everything, I was still willing to work on us and probably give all the other women up. But, you know, I it just ain't going to work out. So what I got to say to all the dudes, you know, sorry, I would never get married if I was y'all because it ain't worth it. <laughs> it ain't worth it. Age 26. A real estate agent suspected of touring another woman's open house. Investigation day four. As cheaters agents know the suspect's routine inside and out, a team of field operatives catch up with him at his work. About half through the day, something unusual happens when the Mark, whose identity has been withheld, leaves the office and heads for an unknown apartment complex. The suspect disappears inside. While this behavior usually indicates an extra relationship encounter, 
Teeter's detectives know that the suspect sells homes and accordingly give him the benefit of the doubt. Later, Cheater's suspect reappears and heads home. Investigation Day 5. On this day of surveillance, Cheater detectives once again follow the suspect to his work. When the workday ends, the shady behavior begins. Agents tail the busy broker to a park in the theater district where he positions his car for a quick getaway. Shortly after the suspect's arrival, an unidentified woman approaches the car. The two converse for a time, but within minutes, the suspect's companion apparently loses an earring and disappears under the dash. Someone should report the suspect to the Better Business Bureau for these fraudulent claims made to Amber. Upon running the park partner's plates, agents discover that the suspect's coy companion is none other than a gentleman in drag. Finishing their conversation, the gender benders part ways. Investigation day nine. After the suspect finishes his lunch, Cheater's agents tail him back to his office. Sometime later, the busy broker hustles out of the office, perhaps late for a shooting. Cheater's PIs tail the suspect to the same apartment he entered during previous surveillance. Operatives watch as the suspect uses his own key to open the door. City records show that the apartment belongs to the same man picked up by the suspect at the park. Later, the suspect exits the apartment with his cross-dressing companion, whose identity remains withheld in tow. With a quick peck, the dolled-up duo walk hand in hand. The suspect and his drag queen enter a nightlife hotspot known for bumping techno music. Several hours later, the now drunken duo resurface. The suspect and his companion embrace the whole way home, stopping at several points for a pickup game of tonsil hockey. Arriving at the companion's apartment, the twosome fumble around outside for a bit before vanishing for the night. With the suspect closing the deal that destroys his own relationship, Cheater's agents end the investigation. Coming up, the confrontation. The suspect revealed his true colors, compelling cheaters to reveal the truth to Amber. Without any reluctance, Amber agrees to meet, hoping to find a way to save her relationship. Amber, thank you for being here this evening. I know that you're here for a specific reason. Some of this information may be very disturbing. I'm gonna put it in your hands if you'd like to see that information now. Okay. As our investigation started, we had a detective that was stationed in front of a place of employment. Here he enters work. Later that afternoon, he's observed leaving around lunchtime. Our detectives followed until he arrived at an undisclosed apartment complex. He goes inside, spends a relatively substantial amount of time. The detectives tell me that he was in there for 45 minutes to an hour. You know, for quite a few days, this was the only thing that seemed even the least bit out of the ordinary as far as behavior was concerned. Okay. On this day, again, our team was outside of place of employment, and he returns to the apartment complex that he was the first day of investigation. Now, he knocks on the door, but then lets himself in. It seems that he has a key. <sighs> Quite some time later, he was observed, and he exited with this young lady. Before long, they end up at a club. They're inside for a large part of the evening. But as they exit later on, we can see that, obviously, they 
had quite a bit to drink. And now we see some of their drunken exhibitionism. Oh my god. Okay, take some time. Detectives inside. We've got another team outside. We're going to go over in that direction. We'll meet up with another detective. They'll update us on any information, whatever the case. We'll make sure that you get the answers that you need tonight. Yeah. Hang on one second. Yeah. Just follow him right now. Right past the light. Pull in right there. He is right there. All right, I see you. Stay close. Jump out, get shot. Hang on, where's the detective? Where's it? Where are they? This is the woman that he lived with. I don't care if it's the woman who he's living with. He's going home. No, I'm going home with her. No, you're going home with her. You are not going yes, home. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Wait. Watch out. Oh, you broke her. Free hell. Okay. Get out of my face. It's like my job and my. Oh, man. Where is. What the. I want to know why. Why? It does not matter where she Baby, is. Baby, why? No. Why did you choose no. an, and a man of all things? Baby, two why years did you with ask me. Him why he wanted me to wear a dress like this, huh? Why do you need to get in my face you know, now of a, all time? You because you've got a bunch of kids. Oh, God! You son of a bitch. Well, you ain't gonna ask for it. We were talking about marriage a year ago. Okay, it doesn't, this doesn't matter. Because he's you so don't matter. Me. You don't matter. I'm you sorry. Matter. I have. Yeah, with him. I do matter. Okay. Because you were so having that? sex with me last night. You had your in me. Oh my god. Okay. I'm not gay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. How can you not call yourself gay if you're with another man? You knew I was gonna find out sooner or later. You Honey, need to well, say the out of this. I don't like you. you. Or you wouldn't and know. Here at yelling, all. Would you? Okay. Guess what? I'm in your life, bitch. No. Okay. You know. Dude, come, on. come on. Stop. Hey, no. This is necessary. Okay, none of this. Well, he is... needs. No, you need to get Whoa. your straight. You need to go on. There's a gay bar right there. There's plenty of nasty old men in there for you. You want to know something? Just don't touch me right now. Don't touch me right now. Huh? I am carrying your child. Oh my God! I saw that you did everything. Oh my God. Have fun with your lesbian. Let's just get in the car. We'll talk about this. We'll just talk about it. I, I need... can't go home with you tonight. I can't. I can't even sleep in the same bed with you anymore. I understand that. I'll sleep on the couch. I'll do anything. 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 I don't even think I can sleep in the same apartment as you. 
Okay, look, the fight's over there, guys. We need to get the away from me. If you don't learn from the mistakes you've made, you're doomed to repeat them. That's a fact. Well, the camera crew, that's learning. What is that what it's called, learning? This isn't a result of what we did. This is a result of what you did. Start being accountable for what you've done. Exactly. Why didn't, that's why didn't you at least start. just tell me? I was trying to salvage something that apparently wasn't there. Let's, let's get you in the van. Are Please, you feeling okay? Honey, we need to talk somehow. We, we do. Can you at least the hug the me or camera. something? I can't hug you at least now. Maybe. But we, we do have to talk. Maybe. You know I love you. I love you. I've always loved you from the first time I. St oh my god. You took me for granted. Yeah. I gave you my everything, and you took me for granted. Uh, I'm sorry. The person I met was not that weak. I guess the reason why I'm sitting here holding your hand is because I still remember who I fell in love with. After the confrontation, Amber decides what to do about her mixed up man. But now Cheaters welcomes the companion from the precious McCoy case. The woman known only as Sam talks about the day she got caught with Precious's man on Cheaters. Sam, age 28. Sam has an intimate discussion with Cheaters describing her frame of mind during the confrontation. When the crew first rolled up on us, I, I really didn't know what to think at first. And then um, one of the outsiders uh, blurted out it was a Cheater show. And I, I looked at him and like what's going on and I just couldn't believe it that they had <laughs> ran in there on us like that. I want to know what this please, is because you you've been playing with me and been playing with my kids. Uh, Ma, okay. Really please. really I what really would like to know. Uh, I ain't got please. 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 No problem, excuse us, man. We can take it outside. Yeah, go. I need to go and find out what's going on. Even though I went off on her at the at the um scene or wherever, um, I really don't act like that in public or whatever, and I really don't blame her. I blame him because he knew he was married when he went out and picked her up at the club. You know he's right. real nice. Right. It's no problem with that. It's no problem with that. It's no problem with that at all. Okay. Okay. I know you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nothing, man. Damn, my. Got to be so she got cheaters up in my mother face. After the confrontation, we we argued about it for a few days, and I ended up just sending him to get it and get out because I was tired of him lying. He was steady lying about it, and he was already caught on camera, on tape. I heard the tape, so he kept trying to deny. It, so I just really. Told him he had to leave. Then you just been lying out of line. Out the with my money. That's what's up. I need my, I need my okay. water time too. All right. I mean, I just wish that you hadn't chose to get close to my kids. But ma'am, do you realize that he was lying to you too? I mean. And I don't want to be the one to have to break that to you, but... But that's how he, he lying, that's how it was. She just got played. That's how it Yeah, but you're being played as well. Boy, she goes, I mean, I don't have no against her we really both got played but i'm married to him so he'll probably come back we'll probably still end up being together but for us right now he can just go on about his business till he get his together so i can finally trust him